Dr. Pedgman Body from Nuveda joins us and discusses his understanding of the plant from a physician's perspective. Good conversation goes through his teachings, his learnings, his travels, and uh, brings that all to us. Hope you enjoy. So, Dr. Pedgman Body. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm excited that we get to talk to each other again. I'll say it. Thank you. Yeah. So, we were just in Vegas a couple of weeks ago. We're in Vegas again. Yes. And this is your now home turf. Yes. You're, um, my, you're my town now. Yeah. So, uh, New Veda, and we've had Shane on. Um, tell us what you're doing with that and why this is your home turf before we jump in. Um, I've been in Nevada for about 19 years. It's about close to 20 years. It's, it's gone by quickly. Um <laughs> I started here. Um, I was I was hired by MGM Grand as, as an emergency room physician um, by training uh, to come and take care of their high rollers and uh, some of the industry high end industry people. Uh huh. What kind of injuries come through uh, MGM uh, emergency? Well, there was no emergency room. It was just uh, I was I pretty much had a room of my own, and uh -huh. they would call me for high end people that needed mostly pain medications and stuff uh -huh. like that. So I, I only lasted about a month and a half there and <laughs> ended up in uh, in a rural emergency trauma center here. And uh, and then I grew from there and I've been here since. And I, I, I grew up, uh, my healthcare centers in both California and Nevada uh -huh. uh, and sold them and started managing uh, part of the healthcare partners, which again sold to DeVita. And I was uh, managing a good portion of Nevada for uh, DeVita Healthcare Partners. Okay. And uh, now you're with Nuveda, and we've gotten the background on uh, from Shane. Yes. Uh, you want to give us a little update so we know exactly what's happening today? Uh, today, today <laughs> we uh, we have uh, won six licenses, two dispensaries, two cultivation, two productions. Uh, we're in the process of building uh, two dispensaries as we speak. Uh, the cultivation production, uh, we're in the fundraising process still, but we're getting some solid traction and uh, some in the planning process at this point. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you've got the licenses. That's the hard part. Right. And then, of course, uh, you're now building, which is the hard part. And uh, you've also got a fundraise, which is the hard part. Yes. Is so that about got, right? we got just hard parts. Yeah, that's right. all. Yeah. <laughs> come, on in, come on into the cannabis industry. Right, right, right. right, right. <laughs> but it wasn't easy. If it was so easy, it wouldn't be so much fun, right? That's also true. Yeah. That's also true. All right. So you are, I believe, our first physician. Uh, so uh, we want to talk to you about, uh, you know, your knowledge of, uh, of plant medicine and, and how far back that goes. So um, let's go all the way back. I think that you're, uh, you're Persian. Yes. All right. Yes. So you were back in the day, Iran. Yes. All right. That's where you grew up until you were how old? Twelve. All right. So you remember. Oh, yeah. I remember all of it. I remember uh, very clearly my 70s, 80s. Yeah, uh, uh, 1979, uh -huh. uh, the, uh, the revolution happened. That's when we had to kind of leave. Uh, 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 grew up as a J Jewish guy in a Muslim country, and, and the revolution wasn't a, a fun process. But uh, we're here. And, yeah, I remember all of it. I remember my, my father is a physician. I come from generations of doctors. And, and I remember my, my father practicing medicine, which is uh, really um, uh, Western medicine, but had some hints of plant-based medicine and what we call folklore and that, that sort of thing in it. Um, from the region? From, from the area, yeah. 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 And, and since I've, uh, um, I went to India for a while and studied Ayur Ayurvedic medicine, which is plant-based medicine. And mm -hmm. really that's the main, one of the main reasons I'm in this field and I'm here yeah. because I believe in it and I've seen it work in, uh, in patients uh, in, with plant medicine uh, outside of the cannabis world, and I've seen it within cannabis, especially close to my heart, my mother. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I've seen I've seen the wealth of knowledge that lives within the plant, and how that interacts in the hydrocarbon chain in a biochemical reaction with our human body. Okay. So you're starting to get over my head. Yeah. So I want to make sure to dot the line here and get to the temples that you pointed out uh, pretty well here. So uh, seventy nine. 
uh, Jewish family in Iran, it's time to go. Uh, we are a family of doctors. Uh, we head to where? Los Angeles. Oh, okay. So straight over to L.A. Yep. And what, what, do you know why that was uh, the pick? We had a cousin here. Okay. Yeah, but the weather was good. And um, and um, there was, there was a, 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 a large population of Persians came to Los Angeles mm -hmm. between New York and Los Angeles. Exactly. Like we had the other. We had the rest of them. Yeah, the rest of them. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, uh, and, and a group were in, in Europe. So there's a, there's a, it was a huge migration out of, out of the country. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so you get to uh, to L. A. Uh, your dad, a doctor. Who else in the family was uh, a doctor? My, my my little brother's a spine surgeon as well. Oh, just a spine surgeon. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's uh, that's so sad. In my, in my father's eyes, we 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 we're both hoodlums, and we're not uh, very well educated because uh, we use other other things than our besides our stethoscopes, our, our eyes, and our our fingers. You know. I see. You yeah. guys are using your uh, you know yeah, technology. Crazy, yeah, your crazy stuff. Yeah. You know why? You know, be a doctor, right? Exactly. <laughs> All right. So this is a conservative guy. Very, very. Mom conservative too. Very. All right. And, uh, you know, growing up in L.A., what, what was that like? So you got there at 12, so you were a teenager in L.A. Yeah, yeah. How, how did that go? Oh, it was pretty interesting. It was, it was an interesting life because, uh, um, you know, you move to the U.S. Uh, with a culture that is completely different. You come, come to a much more open culture, and especially the interaction between the elderly and the children and, and the freedom with, with, um, with the ch within the children – that lives is quite different. So, how, how do you mean? Well, the, the, the family bond is extremely strong in, in Iran. Mm. So at 9 p.m. I was supposed to be home and I was supposed to be having a good dinner with my family every night and all my friends are out and doing whatever they do until whenever. And so by the time I was 16 and a half, I was out of the house. I was living in my friend's place. I right. started college at 16 and a half. So I lived in my car and in my friend's house, and I was homeless for a while. Sounds like you took the Spicoli path. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it was interesting. All right, so so uh, leave the house. Obviously, there's a little bit of a, I'm going to kind of do it this way, and mom and dad are saying, uh, well, fine. Right, 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 right yeah. <laughs> And uh, where'd you go to school? I went to Cal State, California State University, Northridge, uh -huh. for undergrad. Uh -huh. And then I went to... Um, Pomona for medical school. It's an osteopathic. It's a DO uh, medical school. Mm -hmm. uh, I went there um, and I did residency in San Bernardino County Medical Center and, and then in Long Beach. Um, and uh, I was almost immediately in Vegas right after that. Well, almost immediately. But how long uh, did that process take, that medical school process? Yeah, almost immediately eight years later, uh, you're in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> eight, eight, nine years later, yeah. What, what uh, brought you to Vegas? Yeah, I got hired by MGM Grand. Okay, so that's that job. Yeah. Wonderful. And then you had a, uh, it sounded like uh, your own business for a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I managed healthcare centers and uh, emergency. Emergency physicians really don't last that long in, in, the, in, in that department because it's very high stress, long yeah. hours. Uh, so usually they migrate into something else. And I was... Very typical of that. So walk-in clinics type of thing? Yeah, walk-in clinics. We had primary care. We had uh, diagnostic centers. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did all of it. And, and we did well. We grew. We grew. And uh, I, so I took a business approach. And I went to... Uh, and then when I got to... Um, when I sold my uh, healthcare companies to, to healthcare partners, mm -hmm. um, then uh, they, they paid for my school to go to USC Marshall School of Business for Leadership for a year. So that's let's connect those dots because you said you had an, a, a kind of a business approach to your medical practice. Right. Uh, wh what What do you mean there? What What, what is that? I, I just realized I just realized that um, us as physicians were not well trained in business, mm -hmm. and I saw my father. I saw a lot of my family members that you know they spend their entire life seeing patients and taking care of people. And which is great, and I and I love doing that. Yes, but that was pretty much it, mm -hmm. uh, right? And they're at the mercy of others to help them in business or not help them in business. Right. And I've seen it happen time and time. And I, I, I vowed that would not happen to me. So I educated myself and I started learning about business and, mm -hmm. and management. And, and, Excellent. And I, quite, and I quite enjoyed it, and I and I still do. Yeah. How was uh, the USC experience? It sounds like you were an older guy. By the time you got there, right? It was amazing. It was uh, uh, it was with David Logan, 
who was an advisor to Obama, mm. and a brilliant, brilliant guy, and, and uh, uh, learned a lot, learned a lot how to uh, not manage and lead. How to not manage and lead? Yeah. What do you how, mean? How, how to not manage and instead lead. Uh, what, and so uh, take us one step further, if you yeah. would. So a uh, quick, quick overview is when you manage, you are uh, inflicting your thought process upon other people and you're telling people what to do. Mm. When you lead, you are doing that indirectly, but yet it allows you to use the minds of the people that you have in your team to elevate the entire team to a better place. Mm. Don't manage, lead. Correct. Okay, I can dig it. Yeah. Excellent. So uh, USC, fantastic. Now you're out. You're a physician, and now you've got your business degree. What's yeah. the next step? It's not a degree. It was just a one-year course. Oh, okay. Uh, the next step is uh, we we put a pretty aggressive team together here in Nevada. We mm -hmm. were involved with uh, uh, a, a good portion of the infrastructure of the healthcare, and we had a major uh, opiate situation here in in, in Nye County, and we, we managed that well. That's why with what group? With uh, with uh, Davida Healthcare Partners, right. okay. uh, we had a um, uh, high adolescent death rate. No, it wasn't us; it was just happening throughout the country and the state. In Nevada, in, in, in Nevada, in, in the U.S., that's the, really the number one cause of adolescent death right now is is uh, opiate abuse. What, so, what year did you get involved in that? If there uh, there was this spike, that, that was about three and a half years ago or so. Uh huh. So and right in tandem with kind of the downturn, is that fair? Because the economy here went through the floor. Yeah, it was really bad. That's about right. Yeah. And, and, and I don't know, it's a time that uh, prescription drugs are becoming more popular and, and kids are having parties and you know, eating in my candy with alcohol. And so this, this adolescent death came, became a problem for us. And my, my big boss called me up to clean this up. And so we had to let go of a bunch of our physicians and hire new ones and manage it. And we went from... Uh, uh, and brought in Dr. Mahajer, who is a, a Harvard-trained uh, pain management physician, mm -hmm. and he wrote the protocols for the night for Nye County. And we went from three hundred thousand narcotic pills a month to forty thousand. Amazing. Yeah, and so that's one of my partners, and I brought up, I brought him on uh, for, for this uh, um, application process for Nevada. Uh, for Nevada, uh, as far as my partner Shane Terry, who was a, mm -hmm. a fire pilot. And, Great in operations, fantastic guy. Right. Uh, brought him on, and then he brought on Jennifer Goldstein, general counsel, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Hastings law professor. So we put a pretty aggressive team together, and, and uh, luckily we were able to obtain our six licenses. Absolutely. Where is this India trip? Where does that happen along that the, the timeline that we just discussed? The, the, the India trip is right before... Um, uh, I came back to the U.S. and obtained licenses. I, I so left, after Davida. Yeah, I left Davida Healthcare Partners um, and uh, went to India to okay. study Arabic medicine. And and my mom at the time had had, had cancer and it uh, resolved, uh, and then it came back again. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to come back to take care of her. So uh, you had to come back from India. From India. Okay. Her, yeah. So what sent you to India? What? Why? Why go? What? I I kind of lost. Um, Belief in our healthcare in the U.S. Okay. and how we treat patients, I, not how we treat patients, and how we mass produce food that I think is carcinogenic and damaging to our to our humanity, and then we want to go back and fix them. Mm -hmm. And that vicious cycle was something that I lost interest in being in. And I'm not saying it's good or bad. It was just my own decision. This is just you personally, yeah, right? Personal thing, okay. So. Uh, I have amazing colleagues, I, I, and I do believe in Western medicine. Mm -hmm. Actually, truly what I believe in right now is, and that's what I really wanted to do before I started doing the cannabis industry, is, is uh, bring in centers that have Eastern and Western medicine combined with each other with uh, standardizations across the board. Yeah. And now, your dad had some uh, of this uh, based on regional medicine. Did I oh, did I hear you right? When yes. Okay, so explain what what he was doing back in the day, back in Iran. So my father is an infectious disease specialist, which mm -hmm. is pretty rare in, in, a, in a third world country. Those those guys see a lot of different diseases that we don't see here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there, there was there's a times that I would see him use other herbs. So, for example, to 
there's some licorice type of herb. I don't remember what it was, but they use that to break fevers mm-hmm. in children and, and adults, but but in, but in children. Mm-hmm. I remember it was a nasty taste because they used to take it. But uh, that's what they use. They use herbs. They didn't use Tylenol, we, even though we had them. Yeah, it was a more natural way and. Uh, for temperature control, for pain control, they use herbs. Uh, they use herb for nausea. They use oils for uh, emesis, the kind of casserole we use for for emesis and and cleansing mm-hmm. um, your body when you have when you have GI issues. Okay. So I, I've seen them use non traditional, non Western medicine. Right. Um, and this is your conservative dad doing this in Iran. So. Oh yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah. All, my uncle, my mom's brother, did the same. He was a little older than my dad. I remember. Right. And he would he would come home and you know come to our house. So he, he was actually I practiced a lot of medicine like him, like my uncle. Mm-hmm. And he hated giving medication to patients. He's like, don't take medicines. Your body will heal itself. Right. Eat right. Eat the proper foods, okay. which is really in line with Ayurveda, which we, they eat according to your doshas. Uh, so I remember that. Your, and your dosha. Dosha, yeah. So the, the dosha is a. a uh, pitta vata kapha, which which is a balance in your body, and they need to be balanced. Mm-hmm. When your doshas are out of balance, that means your body's out of balance. So it was it was incredibly difficult for me to go to India, being raised in the U.S., educated in the U.S., yeah. and go and ask about high blood pressure and hypertension and what is the treatment. They're like, "What do you mean hypertension?" And these guys are MDs that have trained in Ayurvedic medicine. Ayurvedic, Ayurvedic medicine. They understand and, and believe in hypertension, but they just don't feel that hypertension, or they don't believe that hypertension root cause is the vessels itself. They talk about the entire body not not functioning well. It's just not one vessel. It's just not one system. It's your entire system that is not working well together. So you're not treating the hypertension. Right. You're treating the entire. Correct. Vessel. Correct. Exactly. So we treat. So a patient comes to me and says, "Oh, you know, depending on the race, color, age, whatever age, mm-hmm. I, I pick a medicine to treat their hypertension. It's a symptomatic treatment of that issue. The way they like to approach it is like, I don't want to treat the symptoms. I want to go see, find out, and find out what's causing it. What caused the symptoms? What is the root cause of this patient's blood pressure to be up? Right. And usually. If you adjust, and when you adjust the doshas, mm-hmm. the problem goes away. And I've seen it happen. I've, I, I actually checked in myself as a patient for three weeks yeah. in the hospital. So and what did they correct? Yeah, what did they do to you? Well, there was nothing wrong with me at the time. I just wanted to see what a patient experienced How they would for treat three you. weeks. Right. Three, yeah. And the minimum, minimum stays three weeks in Ayurvedic hospitals. Okay. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you this. The, the doctor, uh, you know, I'm high energy type A, ER, trauma, ER guy, right? <laughs> and he, he came in and he told me, just just be. I'm like, my treatment was just to be. I'm like, what do you mean just be? He's like, don't read, no computers, right. no phones, yeah. just be. Yeah. No sleeping. Right. I'm like, what does that mean? Uh, well, I'm the same way. When you said just be, I, I, I was like, uh, okay, uh, what do I have to do? Yeah. You know, exactly. and the, the whole point is right. no, 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 no. Right, right, right. <laughs> And you know, I was I was B yeah. for <laughs> fifteen minutes and then thirty minutes and an hour. By the third hour I I was about to pull all my hair out. <laughs> sure. By the second day I was about to check out check myself out of the hospital. And you and this is a three week stay. This is, three weeks, but this is this is the third day and I'm like I just <laughs> and meanwhile I'm going to seminars and I'm meeting doctors and yeah. I talk about looking at patients, but still I'm just like <clears throat> what do you do with the rest of the time? Yeah. And uh, luckily, there was a there was a lovely young lady that was studying there uh, from Australia. She was studying Ayurvedic medicine as well, and she saw me. She looked at me like a fish out of water. I just mm. just didn't know what to do with myself, and she checked up on me and kind of calmed me down a little bit. And you know, the third day became the fourth day, and the fifth day, and three weeks later, I walk out of there, and I have never been so balanced. I've never been so centered. Mm-hmm. I never had such clear thoughts. I started remembering phone numbers from 20 years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and uh, let me just make sure I understand this. All you did was nothing? Is that right? No, or were they well, treating you with. So I got, treat, I got yeah. Ayurvedic treatment yeah. because they wanted, because they told me, I, uh, well, my vata was high. Okay. Which means that I was, uh, my, 
agitated state. Oh, my vata is through the roof. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, I could just look at you and say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, You want vata? I got vata. Uh, exactly. <laughs> and, and balancing it is, is really, it was something, uh, something beautiful. It's difficult. I mean, they, you know, you get massaged every day. And people think massages are, are nice, but it's with medicine and oils, and they clean you out. I lost probably 20 pounds, and it was it was amazing. Not not twenty pounds in a good way. I was uh, maybe lost. Maybe I was overweight by five pounds. But I gotcha. It was uh, very uh, cleansing. So the oils. What else were they using to treat your vata, for instance? Um, my vata. Uh, uh, they. Uh, this is the amazing thing about uh, uh, Ayurveda and the humbling experience being amongst these doctors. Mm-hmm. That they could walk up to a, 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 a plant. And they'll tell you that the leaf of the plant, which was one of my treatments, yeah. dried and heated in a heated pad, pounded on your naked body by two operators for about half an hour, would give you a, a certain treatment. And the root of the same plant, in immersed in oil and and and, uh, and uh, the essence taken out of it, and and given to you uh, orally or mm-hmm. rectally mm-hmm. would have an entire different effect on you. And it was, and, and this is just one plant. Yeah. Which uh, plant do you remember offhand or? Um, no. Okay. No. I, I know some of their plants, but I don't remember the, exactly the one that they used for pounding. Yeah. On you. What, what are some of the, that's what I want to get to is some of the, the hits, if you will, uh, in quotation marks, as far as the plants that you learned about there. Um, you know what? You know what? What is a great plant that that, that I learned and, and I love is turmeric. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Like not, the like, spice. It's a root. It's a root. Yeah. Turmeric, okay. Yeah. Turmeric is really um, an anti-cancer. It's, it's it's I've seen it work with patients that have been coming to Ayurvedic centers for for years. Mm. And this is not you know you don't take turmeric and next day your tumor goes away. Right. Right. You, you know, it's, it's a long, long process. All of these the Ayurvedic processes are, are long processes. That's why it's three weeks minimum stay, Minimum right? three weeks yeah. stay, right? You know, for us, we have a synthesized pill that we take mm. here and you know, your headache goes away. Sure. But for, for them, is balancing you out. And balancing someone doesn't happen overnight. It's yeah. a long-term yeah. situation. But I've seen patients with historical cancer, tumors uh, that have medication regimens, and usually turmeric is part of it. Uh, ginger is a, is a high an, anti-inflammatory, just just like turmeric is. Yeah. Um, uh, so these I, aren't exotic. I mean, these are things that are in my spice rack. Right. But yeah. but, but 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 also, the, the 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 big part of Ayurveda or any plant-based medicine is that you need to use the plants that are within your environment. Mm-hmm. So a good physician will be able to make you a medicine. From the plants that are available to them locally in this geography, in, in a geography, a, a demographic geography that you're in, the desert is is a little different, mm-hmm. and the uh, the Indian Ayurvedic uh, doctors are not that great with the desert environment okay. that I know of. However, <clears throat> actually, from India, I was I was going to study with the Aborigines in Australia mm-hmm. that have their own medicines, but they're desert type of medicines mm-hmm. in, in treatment of the shamans and, and, and that sort of thing. So, mm-hmm. Okay, so what do I have to know about these shamans? I, I, uh, I don't know that much. Of, I don't know that much about the shamans. They're actually not shaman. They, they, they're not our, what we think of traditional shamans, but they, these are the Aborigines uh, doctors, the local doctors right. uh, that they took care of the, uh, the, the villages. And I don't know much about them. Um, uh, I I know some amount. I don't want to get into it because I'm not an expert in it. Sure. No, so, no, nor am I expert in Ayurvedic medicine. Got it. Uh, I can tell you this. Um, I know enough of Ayurvedic medicine that I that I know that I don't know much. Right, and that is true of most things, I would imagine. So, in in understanding that you did take just this base knowledge uh, and this desire to kind of want to continue on that path, you come back, uh, and at the same time, if I heard you right, your your mother. Um, you know, her cancer, uh, mm-hmm. kind of comes back and you come back. Um, well, first off, what did you do with your mother? So my, my mom, uh, has, my mom is still alive. She's got ovarian cancer. She had ovarian cancer. 
Um, and one of my good friends uh, took care of her, a surgeon, amazing surgeon, mm -hmm. um, and did a really good job and uh, gave her three years of, of her life back. And then it came back. It was pretty spread disease. Mm -hmm. And it came back the first time around. She got chemo after after a massive surgery. Mm -hmm. And she ended up getting, having chemo and back in the hospital every single time after chemo. She ended up having a bilateral pulmonary embolism, which her lung, she almost had a 50% chance of dying. It was just a mess. horrible yeah. year for her, all of us. And, and, you know, we sat there, four of us in the house, three doctors, <laughs> one infectious disease doctor, one orthopedic surgeon, right. and one emergency medicine doctor. And we just we were, couldn't do anything about her. She just couldn't eat. She couldn't function. She was in the hospital. There's nothing we could give her that would help her. Then three years later, come back, cancer's back, similar surgery, similar chemo treatment, mm -hmm. pretty much. Then similar I, result? No. I put her on cannabis. And How'd you get that by your father? He, I didn't tell him. Okay. He didn't like it. Okay. He would have no part of it. Right. And, and by the way, I was that guy, by the way. I sat on the boardrooms with, you know, I was directing a group of doctors, right. groups of doctors. Right. And I was that guy that said, we will never use this. I was that guy. So then what, so then you, you go to India, you come back, you understand that there is something in this plant. In you're, any plant. In any plant. You're, you're, uh, you're in California. Hey, there's a lot of cannabis here. Yeah. Right. Pretty much. I called one of my buddies up. I'm like, look, you know. Go, go and get this from wherever you want. I don't want to know where you got it from, but just give me some stuff. Give me some. Uh, at that time, he brought me a lot of these Jolly Rancher looking things okay. you know, at the time. And uh, and and it's not those property. And I gave this to my mom and, you know, I come home, she's passed out one day on the, on the kitchen floor. Right. And by the time we figured out the dosing of this thing, right. um, it was perfect. No admissions to the hospital. Right. She was sitting at a table eating and drinking with us relatively well. Uh, did lose her hair and all that, but it was... Well, that's the chemo. Yeah, but, but, but really the, the, the chemo is makes, that makes you not want to eat, not want to drink, I not want to move. It's not going to say, okay. She had neuropathy. She couldn't walk the first time around because she had, her nerves were shot through mm -hmm. the chemo. She was walking around. She had a little bit of tingling. but they, <clears throat> So meanwhile, Nevada, all this stuff is going on. My mom is, uh, actually, I had her with me in Nevada because her doctor was in Nevada at the mm -hmm. time. And cannabis was coming on, uh, on the market. The local guys, the, lo uh, the local uh, jurisdictions asked me to help them manage the, the medical marijuana program because we were so successful in the opiate program. Okay. And, you know, I'm back from India. I believe in plant-based medicine now. My mom is thriving on this. The local guys are asking me to help. This this. this all the signs were just like, this is what you need to do. And, and even though, for your life, for my life, right. I was like, it's, it's such a huge sign. Like, like, and, and forget about the sign. I wanted it. I wanted to learn about like, what is going on. This is, I don't understand this. I want to understand this. Yeah. So <clears throat> we put the application we got it. And, and during the application process, my mom is now four months out. Um, she's doing well. When did we tell dad? Oh, I told dad, well, after the second chemo, we were, uh, Friday night, Shabbat dinner, we were home with my parents. Right. And my mom was sitting at dinner, and she's got you know, the candles on, and she's cooking food. And my dad is looking at me, and you know, my brother. And you know, my brother is a very straight-laced straight brother, orthopedic spine surgeon, you know. And uh, we're like, what is going on? I'm like, I'm giving her cannabis. Weed. I said, weed. I'm giving right. her weed. Right. Like, she's, my dad's like, what? I'm like, yeah. Look at her. And he's like, oh, my God. And he didn't say anything. He's just like, that was it. Pretty much. When If my dad doesn't object to anything, that means that means it's good to go. There's, you know, right. He's approved of it. You know? <laughs> so, I'm not going to tell you why I approve. I will tell you when I disapprove. Exactly. Right. <laughs> I'm like, you know, so we all became believers in this. Yeah. And, and imagine their son, you know. Typical Jewish family, they think their sons can, can walk on water, is now getting the cannabis world. Oh, my right. God. It's a drug dealer now. Right, and but we thought this guy was a physician. Now yeah, he's a uh, yeah, you know he's trying to trying to <laughs> deal drugs. And that's what you know. That's what the original thought was. Right, but no one, the, the entire family, said a word about it because they really saw how well my mom did, and and it was very clear that my intention was to come out and do exactly what patients like my mom need, and 
dosing it properly. Yeah. I to this day I haven't. I've, I, it's much better than you know a few years ago. Oh sure. But to this day I really count those patients as accurately as I wanted as I wanted to be, and uh, uh, and that's one of my missions with this. Yeah. I mean, how how close are you though? Are you uh, you know, when you are dosing patients, do you feel that you're within 10 and 20 milligrams? Do you feel like, you know, uh, for, you know, cancer patients that are on chemo, are you, how close are you to I, I'm not, precision? I'm not prescribing this much, so I don't know. I, yeah. I, I discuss it with them. Now that a lot of my family members know, yeah. they call me up and they ask me, what sure. should I do? And, yeah. and, you know, you know, and I'm not very familiar with what's out there in the California market. Sure. And most of my family is in California. so Because now you're here and right, focused right, in here. Right. But yeah. I find, for example, Chiba Chews. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't know if I can talk about it. Sure, why not? Uh, Chiba Chews are, are good. They're small. They're they're relatively dosed well. Yeah. Uh, so if, if you take a half of it, you know, pretty much you're getting about 20 milligrams or 22 milligrams or 18 milligrams. And you know the, the, you know the combination THC, THC level versus the CBD levels and and for medical, uh, two milligrams is not that big of a deal. No, no. For no, adult no. use, it is something certainly to pay attention to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But if we're talking about uh, coming back from chemotherapy, two milligrams, you you can uh, right. <laughs> you right. can fudge that. Right, right, right. Oh my God! So the mental picture of these three physicians uh, sitting around your mother who could not eat, who could not walk, who just was in uh, not a good place at all. And completely flummoxed as to what to do, uh, really not being able to do anything, and then flash forward to her sitting at that dinner table. That's mind-boggling. Yeah, you know what's more mind-boggling to me is she electively showed up to a county commissioner meeting. Yeah, she shows up all dressed up in a county commissioner meeting, and she. Goes up there and she's Persian. She, right. She's got a thick accent and she goes up there and she says, "This medicine has changed my life." In, and the county commissioners know me. I've been there for many years, and right. it was like I had tears in my eyes. I had tears in my eyes because we made this amazing presentation with Shane, who's um, brilliant, and yeah. Jennifer, and myself, and you know our security people and our uh, uh, you know forefront advisors was with us. And, right. And uh, Chris Crane and the boys. Chris Crane was with us actually. He spoke for us. Yeah. And we come up, so all we got all these people that are talking, and then this little lady shows up there and goes, "This changed my life." It was it was an epic moment for me in my life that that I'm doing the right thing yeah. and I believe in it. Yeah. And the patients are going to get better. And ever since then, I've been researching this. I spent hours a day researching cannabis. Yeah. And I'm in love with this thing. It's, it's amazing. So so I want to get to your research, but but again, just to to kind of put our thumb down on the fact that. Uh, your mother uh, certainly is not uh, the first person that would uh, be, uh, you know, that patient to, to run up to the uh, county commissioner and, and, and state her case. Uh, this is the last person uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that you would expect to do that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, My mom has a master's in psychology, very conservative woman, would never go to a county commissioner meeting. I no, I mean, that's, she, she was so passionate about it. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's get to this research uh, that, that you're doing. I, I know that you're reading a ton. Where are you finding most of your information? Israel. Okay. And so what, what is your – now, again, this is one man's kind of reading. This is one man's opinion. What are you seeing that they're doing there? They're, they're doing proper research projects mm -hmm. that we're not seeing out of the U.S. Even the studies out of NIDA and, and the, the material that they're using out of Mississippi mm – -hmm. Um, uh, what Sue Sicily is trying to do. Right. I love her to death. Good friend of mine. Yeah. Well, she has to, she says it herself. She has to go through NIDA and it is imperfect yeah. to say the least. Yeah, it is. And, and I mean, all of that is just, to me, I hate to say it's such an absolute waste of time and energy. Right. Again, your opinion. My, I, my, 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 my opinion. <laughs> because, because for her, what, what she is doing is she's at least getting some research on the books here. That's the first step. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, 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 let me retract that. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. A waste of time and energy in in trying to come up with something proper to put out for physicians to understand. Yeah. However, these are the steps that we need to take right. to get there. There you go. Okay. Okay. It is, it is to me, absolutely ludicrous yeah. that us as a country have... Uh, Greatest country in the world. In the world, yeah. 
uh, have to go through these kind of situations yeah. and these kind of regulations yeah. to be able to produce information that is substandard, yet smaller countries mm -hmm. that, that are so much more proactive and these studies that are coming out that are, that are moving, these studies are incredible. Yeah. What are the key takeaways from some of the stuff that uh, you've read uh, from Israel? I'll tell you, the, 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 I talk about this all the time because yeah. I'm just floored by this. And, and this is, uh, I think they're studying trials and, and, and humans. Uh, but on mice, they really found, found, have found out that a combination of a, a CBD, THC is a, a complete receptor blocker on a glioblastoma of the brain tumor, which, the, which is a, a malignant brain tumor, mm -hmm. uh, glioblastomas. And that, to me... Is I think I missed uh, the the uh, the lead there. Uh, CBD THC. What is the effect on it, that it, on that it, brain tumor? It, it pretty much blocks all tumor growth. Uh -huh. so I, I, I apologize if I I don't want to get too intricate. It blocks the not only blocks the growth. Yeah. It reduces and essentially is curative. That's why this is so important to me. It doesn't just stop the tumor from growing mm -hmm. or from cancer mm -hmm. from growing, but it actually reduces it. Mm -hmm. This is in mice, mm -hmm. it's not in humans, mm -hmm. but this is such huge information. Can you send me that study and we'll kind of put it on uh, this file so people can kind of click it right, right when they're right, listening right. to this? Abstract. I, I got to find it in my abstract. Yeah, I have Perfect. It. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Uh, you said, uh, uh, as and we know, anywhere but the US, you can, uh, <laughs> they're, they're doing some good research. Where else besides uh, Israel? Um, I think I think Canada is, is becoming very proactive. Yep. Uh, uh, to say the least, with their brand new prime minister, by oh, the way. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, this this guy. Uh, uh, actually, I was having a conversation with him about him yesterday and, and two days ago. Yeah. And he's got a family member that is involved. He's forty two years old. He's very proactive. He's sharp. Yeah. And everybody's so excited. He won by a landslide. Yeah. And and they uh, didn't think that he was going to win. They That's did. the best part, right? You right. know that we have we have two uh, episodes uh, focused on Canada right before the vote and right after. Right before the vote, uh, we've got uh, uh, I think it's uh, Deepak uh, from the CNMMA, one of the associations up there, saying it's probably going to be you know uh, a draw, which means that. Uh, the old prime minister is going to win basically a minority government. And that's what everyone was saying in Canada. Then there's the day after, and he just wins by a landslide, just like that. Yeah. No one expected yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. And everybody's so excited. In fact, I was with a group from Canada that is coming out investing in Nevada for, for, for cannabis. Uh, and these Canadian guys are so excited. I think I know the guy. Yeah? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. yeah. Two guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, so Canada is, is proactive. Uh, they, they're they're moving. I think um, uh, uh, Spain. I've seen some stuff come out of Spain. Yeah. Um, Australia is just getting on board. But I think the way they're getting on board is is, is the right way. Yeah. They want to do research on it. So I haven't seen a lot out of there. But but they're moving. Well, let's at least get that abstract, if not the whole uh, paper uh, that you read uh, sure. from from Israel, and and we'll we'll make that available. Uh, just one more thing on uh, Trudeau, the new uh, prime minister. Uh, I just loved it. I don't know if you saw the, the press conference. Uh, this reporter says, you know, uh, it, it was very important to you to, to have an equal um, kind of uh, disbursement, uh, you know, equal men, equal women in your, in your cabinet. Why, why is that? And his answer, it's 2015. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, it's because it's, it's, it's. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So um, I, I love uh, your focus, and I want to keep talking to you about the research that you're reading about. I'm uh, going to do my best to get the author of that uh, paper uh, on here, um, and we'll put it up and uh, as part of this uh, episode, and, and again, hopefully more in depth uh, later. But uh, I think it's time for the three final questions. Yes. Three final questions are, uh, what has most surprised you in cannabis? What has most surprised you in life? And then uh, the third and final, either the toughest or easiest on the soundtrack of your life, uh, what would be your, your song? Um, and so, what has most surprised you in cannabis? I think what surprised me in cannabis is, it keeps surprising me, it's, it hasn't stopped, is the, is the, Rawness and the depth of this plant. Yeah. 
how broadly it affects people and how deeply it affects people in so many different ways. Yeah. And by that, I mean medicinal and non-medicinal. Yeah. Hemp, all the way down to extracted terpenoids. And uh, that's, that's the answer to your question. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, there's a lot in there, to say the least. Yeah. What's most never seen it. I've never seen it with anything or any plant or any medicine ever. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's basically from a lifetime of practicing medicine. You've never seen it ever. So um, what uh, what has most surprised you in life? I used to get surprised in there. And I, to be honest with you, huh. uh, uh, nothing in life surprises me anymore. It's... Um, I, I think uh, I, I believe in the universe and I believe in the direction of, uh, of the universe and everything and anything that happens sweet uh, or not is part of life and, and um, uh, nothing surprises me. I'm a little surprised to be here right? where I am right now doing this, yeah. uh, but that doesn't surprise me either, to be honest. I got you. When you actually think about it, yeah. not surprising. Yeah. Uh, I love that. I, um uh, again, I don't think that I will ever get that picture of the three physicians, you know, with your mother and then flash forward to the table. I won't get that out of my head. I don't think I will ever uh, forget that image, uh, those two images. Uh, and so finally, uh, on the soundtrack of uh, Dr. Body's Life. Frank Sinatra, I did it my way. <laughs> I love it. And uh, Frank Sinatra, I will take you with that. Uh, there is also, and you should know this, uh, live from uh, uh, Aloha from Hawaii. Yes. Uh, Elvis Presley yes. also does a, a pretty decent version. Right. But uh, my way is uh, classic. That is, uh, that's one of the best. And so we will think about that and say goodbye. Thank you so much, Doctor Body. Thank you for having me. And, and again, I wanted to uh, tell you that I've met you in in in, in different situations and different occasions, and it's always enchanting. And it's really interesting on how your mind works and how you're able to engage people and groups and bring out the right questions and the right atmosphere uh, to allow these questions to ferment in people's minds in a particular way that I think is not common. And I think you have a great talent. Thank you. So there's Dr. Pedgeman Body from New Veda. Good conversation. Uh, very much appreciate his time and uh, what he's doing based on what he knows at Nuveda and uh, generally speaking for uh, the industry as far as his understanding of the plant. Try to do our best to get a few more physicians lined up. 